All right, let's get this out the way. If Kayvon Thibodeau is there at four, if he's on the board, he's the pick for the Jets, for me. So let's get that out the way before you at me on Twitter for this take. However, if he's not there at four, I think there's two intriguing options that we could take that maybe aren't very popular right now. I think that Akim Aquanu is still very much in play at number four, even though we paid Lakin Tomlinson. I also think it's not crazy to go ahead and snag wide receiver Garrett Wilson with the number four overall pick in the draft. Here's why. Let's start with Icky. Okay. I know the first thing we're going to say. He's going to be a backup. Well, let's open our minds and actually conceptualize what Icky's role would be for the Jets next year if they take him at four. Yes, it is true that on the opening depth chart that comes out in August, it will probably have Ike McQuanu not listed as a starter. So I understand for a franchise that's struggled, to say the least, that has a lot of holes, that's far from an ideal scenario. Got it. However, he's going to play, and we all know that, our offensive line, our starters missed a combined 25 plus games last year because of injury. And if any starter goes down, if any starter, any of our five offensive linemen go down, Icky's in the game. I'll explain why. He can play both guard spots. He can play both left tackle and right tackle. So if either tackle goes down or either guard goes down, which is more of a when than an if, Icky is in the game. And you say, what about center? Icky doesn't play center. Well, let me ask you this. Say Connor McGovern goes down, has to miss eight weeks. Oh no. I'm saying, Icky, we're going to start getting you some reps at center in practice. And then after our bye week in a couple weeks, you're going to play center for a month. Because is Ike McQuanu learning center on the fly and upgrade over Dan Feeney? Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we're one injury away, which is a given in the NFL, from him being on the field. Now, let's say the ideal scenario happens. Becton comes back healthy, as strong as ever. Lakin Tomlinson is the rock that he is. Connor McGovern's holding it down. ABT, everyone's healthy. Everyone's playing solid. And Icky is just wasting away on the bench. Make some calls at the trade deadline. Hey, we have George Fant, a really quality starting tackle on the last year of his modestly priced contract, who's just about to be 30 years old. Anybody in the NFL a taker for that? Oh, yeah. And now we can unload the remaining part of his contract off our books, get some draft capital back. I mean, on the Joe Douglas tax, who knows what you can get for for George Fant, especially if a team, like a contending team, has an injury, a tackle, gets desperate. Who knows? So now we have some draft capital coming back that eases the sting of Icky sitting on the pine. Now you have Icky and Becton as your bookend tackles for the future. And okay, he sat on the bench for eight games. And now you have another draft pick. And you unloaded the remaining five, six million on fans' contract. That's not a bad scenario. It's not a bad scenario at all. Then you might say, well, what about Edge? Because we know the three positions you got to get with with a top 10 pick, right? The positions that don't come available in free agency, at least the good ones. Quarterback, do we have ours? I think so. We'll find out next year, but we're not taking one this year. So that's a check. The other two positions are tackle and edge. Well, now we just took a tackle at four in Aquanu and we have another top 10 pick and we can go get the edge. Why would I go Aquanu at four instead of edge at four if KT's off the board? Because the drop-off at tackle, there's no other tackle to me that would be worth a top 10 pick besides Neal and Iquanu, who aren't going to be on the board. Maybe Charles Cross, but I don't think he's going to be there at 10 either. However, I think there is a second tier of edge rushers, right? Hutchinson and, and KT are tier one, but there's a second tier of three really good players, all of which I think are worthy of the 10th overall pick in the draft. That's George Karlaftis, good player, basically a Walmart version of Aiden Hutchinson. 
no shade, good player, good motor, good athlete, was bummed he didn't go to the combine. Speaking of combine, Trevon Walker, whoo. I mean, not a lot of production in college, but 6'5", 270, and a 4'5", and change, 40-yard dash. Those are some Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney, Julius Peppers, freak show numbers at defensive end. And a big dude, a strong dude. Speaking of production, Jermaine Johnson, 11 and a half sacks in 12 games. So all those three guys could be in play at 10 if you go icky at four. Right? We, we can't get in this stuck mindset of like, this is what has to happen at four. This is the type of player that you can only take at four. Like we have two top 10 picks with the way the board falls, with the level of top tier talent and depth in this year's particular draft class. Like, what can we do with these two picks to feel like we came away with the best value at positions that are premier positions? We have to be more open-minded about it. Same thing with my next proposition at four, wide receiver Garrett Wilson. Can't take a wide receiver at four. There's a million good wide receivers in the second round. Yeah, like Stephen Hill and Devin Smith and Denzel Mims. I, I mean, I know we hit on Elijah Moore, and I'm, I shouldn't hold those other picks against Joe Douglas because obviously he's a better GM you know, than the guys that pick Stephen, uh, Stephen Hill and Devin Smith. But if you have the bona fide stud and you think, if the Jets think like I think that Garrett Wilson is a life-changing offensive weapon immediately, like Odell Beckham was with the Giants, like Justin Jefferson was with the Vikings, like Jamar Chase was with the Bengals last year, I think he's that dude. And if the Jets think he's that dude, let's not get cute and hope he falls till 10. Take him at four. And then same thing, same plan as if you take a Quanu. You get the edge at 10. So it's me, you're getting the edge. You got to get the edge either way at 10. But now, Iquanu and Wilson are in play for me at four. It's not a crazy idea. I mean, you get Garrett Wilson... How exciting would that be? I mean, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Braxton Berrios, Denzel Mims. Can you name a better Jets wide receiver core? I mean, I know we had a really good duo with Marshall and and Decker, but it wasn't that deep. And it was only for a couple years. So I'm here for that. And again, it would prioritize either Aquanu or Garrett Wilson would both be prioritizing the development and our ability to adequately assess quarterback Zach Wilson, and you still come away with your edge in the top 10. And yeah, one of those edge rushers, none of them in that, in that tier are going to be 15 sack a year guys. Not every top 10 pick is a Bosa brother. And if they are, they go one, two or three anyway. So I think a guy who can come in and get you eight to 10 sacks be good against the run, get some pressures, bat down some balls, that's fine. We've only had three edge defenders of the quality that I just mentioned in the last 20 years. That's John Abraham, Sean Ellis, and an older Calvin Pace for a little bit. That's it. Those have been the only double-digit sack edge defenders we've had since the turn of the century. So that's fine to bring in one of those players at 10. It's absolutely fine and prioritize offense at four. Let me know in the comments below, do you think it's crazy to still pick Ike Mekwanu at four, even though we gave Lakin Tomlinson the bag, and is four way too high for wide receiver Garrett Wilson? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and go Jets.